Uh, again, now we turn to the Hebrew prophets, the written prophets. There were a period of about 200 years when, and this is unique in all world religions, you had these people rise up who were prophets, meaning mouthpieces. Presumably God spoke through them and often used their lives to make a statement to Israel. And the first one I want to turn to, we're just going to turn to it, not all of them, is Hosea. Hosea means the same as Jesus, okay? God saves. Hosea lived in the north, northern country of Israel. It used to be Israel in the northern country and Judah in the south, even though they were also called Israel together. Israel in the north, when apostate, they were not, God got so upset with them, he canceled out Israel, basically. Well, Hosea was from the northern kingdom, and he prophesied in uh, the 8th century BCE. Now, the first three chapters, it's a, it's a little, like 15 chapters. It's the first time that God uses the prophet's life to make a statement to Israel, but the statement has so much meaning that within Israel, what I'm going to read shortly is one of the high points of revelation in the Hebrew Bible and Jewish understanding. So, in the first chapter, God has uh, Hosea marry Gomer, who is a prostitute, and he has children as if, uh, you know, prostitute Israel had been prostituting itself by uh, making alliances with other nations. Uh, God's going to take him in. In the second chapter, God says to Hosea, reject her. And the children. I don't want you. But then, God has a change of mind. No, take her back. And here is what God says. These words are incredible. On that day, says the Lord, you will call me my husband. No longer will you call me my Baal, which means master. For I will remove the names of the Baals, these other fake gods, from her mouth, and they shall be mentioned by name no more. I will make for you a covenant on that day with the wild animals, the birds of the air, and the creeping things of the ground. I will abolish the bow, the sword, and war from the land, and I will make you lie down in safety, and I will take you for my wife, forever. I will take you for my wife in righteousness and in justice, in steadfast love and in mercy. I will take you for my wife in faithfulness and you shall know the Lord. And the word that is used for know is the same word that is used that Adam knew his wife. It was relations. How does that grab you? Wow! This is the statement of marriage. There's going to be marriage. You get it? You're going to be my wife. I'm going to marry you forever. That's what's coming. We need to hear these words, even though there are these problems about unfaithfulness. and God keeps coming back and attempts again and again and again to make things right. Now, later on, in the sixth chapter, is a statement that is extraordinarily important that Jesus himself quotes. For God saying, I desire steadfast love, Hesed. I desire steadfast love, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. It's in Hosea also where the prophet says, there is no knowledge of God in the land, which I'm sorry to say is very true today. The land suffers when there's no knowledge of God in the land. So this, my friends, is a great statement of the impending marriage. Stay tuned for the next prophet.